as you know, I'm on the run from a corrupt shadow organization with sleeper agents in leadership positions of various civilian and military organizations. So I'm glad you could meet me in this obscure truck stop diner 72 miles southwest of Santa Fe. I wanted to make sure you knew about the Reillusion releasing their Wrinkle Maps system for Character Creator 4.2 and iClone 8.2. I've been waiting for this feature to drop for mm, over a year. And I have to say, Reillusion got this one right. It's very easy to use. Like along with most Reillusion interfaces, it's basically drag and drop for a decent automatic results in any CC3 figure, uh, CC3 plus figure. I'm pretty sure it works for some of their other internal figures, but I haven't used them. Character Creator can translate UV maps to several different meshes, and I think that's that's all that's happening here, is it just translates the maps. The other great thing is the wrinkle maps are already in the new current exporters for Unity, Blender, and Unreal. And of course, I'm demonstrating them here for you in iClone right now. I was worried that this was just going to be adding nine more enormous high-res maps to my figures. And yeah, that's basically what it's doing, adding nine more 4K maps. <laughs> Some of the wrinkle maps overlap the same areas of the face, but they're triggered by different facial expressions. So these maps need to stay as separate images. And it's not just normal maps, but also ambient occlusion and a redness map that blends with the skin shader. With the updates, we got four sets of maps for free, designed for four different characters, and they made custom maps for the two flagship characters, Camilla and Kevin. There's a new figure called Susan. Suzanne? I think it's Susan. Anyway, she's a mature lady, which I like because there needs to be more interesting characters in 3D animation. They also provide a generic set of the wrinkles, which they show videos of it being edited in Photoshop with a warp brush tool. So for free, there are four versions of the wrinkle maps to try, and then you can customize them further. And there's an internal tool that lets you adjust the individual strengths and the redness of each facial area. So very easy to drop this onto an existing character and tweak the settings to blend, but some manual work in an image editor to take one of these map sets and fit to your particular character. Now this is kind of consistent with other character creator features like skin gen in that the functionality is built into the program. So it's not technically a plugin since the full functionality is there for everyone with some free sample maps to give you a taste, but then the add-on maps that really drive the feature are sold separately. And presumably content creators need to make their own maps for their own figure sculpts, however that's supposed to work. Uh, Reillusion has also released a paid asset that provides 10 more sets of wrinkle maps. Five are based on scans of real people and Fiverr art for stylized tune characters. Personally, I think they should have broken those into two products. And I don't see myself using the tune maps, but there you go. Uh, the realistic maps in this add-on are for five general categories of people. There are shallow uniform wrinkles for young people and shallow asymmetrical wrinkles for expressive characters, maybe thin and older. The other three uh, sets are a bit more fleshy for bulky and sagging skin. The five tune maps are along the same idea, uh, but obviously way more stylized and therefore just kind of weird. Uh, also in this paid add-on is a new set of expression blend shapes, or I guess I should call them expression enhancement blend shapes, specifically for the area around the mouth, which obviously moves the most. And these blend shapes look really useful because they adjust the actual vertices, not just the normal maps. And the idea is that you will use the new morphs inside the expression editor uh, in Character Creator to customize each figure. Now, before to customize my uh, figure's expressions, I had to export my figure's OBJ and do a little resculpting and then re-import each exp 
expression as a new blend shape. And I made you a video how to do that, which is linking up in the corner. I mostly did this to remove the bone dependency and get pure blend shape expressions. But as you can guess, that's a lot of work that I don't want to do. And I'm not some face expert on how to sculpt skin that slides around on the front of your skull. So <laughs> it's all, sculpting is all pretty haphazard for me. Uh, I'll definitely grab the paid add-on because this is obviously so much easier and every little customization on your figure helps them look unique. You know, the downside of this add-on is the price. It's another $200 for those 10 maps and uh, some number of mouth blend shapes. Uh, yeah, I think there's a 10% discount for the first month and probably not going on sale again until November, Black Friday, maybe. So 10% off is not much of an incentive. But they got to make money somehow. I'm using the Camilla maps on this figure, which were free, and I didn't need to adjust much. I think I toned down some of the redness, like in the, in the, yeah, in that chin. Uh, you know, because this figure is very pale. But yeah, I think wrinkle maps is an easy improvement. Uh, this is, in my opinion, the one thing that has been holding back character creator figures. MetaHuman has had wrinkles for a while, but of course, then you're limited to using Unreal. Uh, like I said before, I was worried this would be another nine full res 4K maps running in real time on this figure, and that would kill my frame rate. Which, yeah, that's pretty much exactly what happened. It didn't kill my frame rate. I'm not going to exaggerate, but I'm already struggling to hit live frame rates as it is in iClone. So fortunately, you can bake down these textures. Uh, again, this is kind of like skin gin in that you can bake all the layers down to fewer maps, but then you lose the ability to edit. Now, I also think the wrinkles add so much needed subtlety and realism to the 3D head. So I've dropped down to rendering with 2K maps in iClone, and it looks pretty good and runs faster. So I'm not not so worried about bumping into, you know, uh, dropping below realistic animation frame rates. Uh, but that reminds me, there are another couple of updates in iClone 8.2, including a new look at function that activates the head and upper torso. So they kind of rotate with the looks. And it's also integrated better into timeline to be keyframed. And that's something that's annoyed me because there's just like no subtle way to get a figure to look at anything in iClone. But uh, even better, iClone can now load textures progressively, so switching between 4K rendering and 2K rendering can be done without a restart. Uh, also, scenes open and are available to edit while the textures are still loading, and that's a great usability improvement. That probably won't get the attention it deserves, but kind of huge. Now, also quietly behind the scenes, there is a new Rococo plugin, which coincides with the Rococo Studio 2 coming out of beta with their new feature that's supposed to reduce magnetic interference and drift. I will try that out this weekend and let you know, since there's been some bad workflow issues between Rococo and iClone that has really kind of made that whole process a pain and kind of dampened my desire to use my smart suit. Well, I'll be testing that setup this weekend and probably have another video for you early next week. Certainly there's a lot more to talk about, but I'm on the run from these shadow organization sleeper agents. So I'll get word to you through this YouTube channel as soon as I know more, but be sure to like and subscribe. I'm Wet Circuit. This is Cutscene Artist. I'm out of here and on the run.